What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys my favorite tool inside of Unreal Engine 5, the foliage tool. Now I've used this tool extensively, but working on TV shows like the Alaskan Bush People on Discovery Channel, Aztec Gold on the History Channel, doing commercials for Nickelodeon like The Legend of Korra, and of course doing official logo animations for Epic Games. Now if you're not sure exactly what this tool is, let me show you right now. So we're starting off right now with a blank slate. I'm using the latest version of Unreal Engine 5, which is 5.3 right now. And we're gonna get started by creating a landscape. So I'm gonna actually come down here and I'm gonna delete this floor plane. I'm gonna delete the player start. And then up here in the upper left-hand corner where it says selection mode, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna come down to landscape. Now you're gonna see that we have this green grid here and this is our basic landscape, but we want a little bit of terrain. So if I come back over here on the left-hand side where it says import from file, I'm gonna left click on this and this is gonna ask us for our height map. Now I created a height map already used in World Creator in which I'm gonna to give to you guys absolutely free. So make sure you grab the project file from School of Motion if you wanna follow along. Now I'm gonna single click on these three dots right here. And that's gonna open up our Windows Explorer in which you can see right here, you should have this file if you're following along, SLM underscore height map, and this is a 4K map. So I'm gonna click on this and click on open. And then you're gonna get this message, it's not a tiled image. And so I'm just gonna click no. And now you can see that we actually have a terrain in here. So if I hold down right click and hit E, just to move up here a little bit, and I'm gonna scroll my mouse to go faster. Now you can see that we have a terrain here and it's looking pretty nice. But the one thing that we wanna add is maybe a material here. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna use the Mega Scans material. If I come right here where we have this cube with the plus sign, I'm gonna left click on this and I'm gonna come down to Quixel Bridge. Now with Quixel Bridge open, I'm gonna come over on my left-hand side to where we have this little globe. I'm gonna left click on this and this is gonna bring up a bunch of asset packs. So if I scroll down here under environment, you should see this one that says Japanese tropical jungle. I'm gonna left click on this and this render right here are using all the assets that are down here. So I'm gonna come down here and you can see I already have some stuff downloaded, but I'm gonna download from scratch just so you can kind of see the process. So let me find a dirt material, maybe this one right here. This is forest floor. So if I left click on this and down here, we have some quality settings. And so the highest is gonna be 8K, high quality is gonna be 4K, 2K and then 1K. So I'm just gonna do high quality right now cause I don't need anything too crazy. And I'm gonna click on download. And once it's done downloading, you'll see this green check mark right here. And then on the right hand side, you'll see add. So I'm just gonna left click on add. And it's gonna automatically add it to our project file. And while this is adding, let me actually scroll up cause I could grab some rocks while we're in here as well. So maybe let's say for this example, I'm gonna use the small forest rocks. You could go to high quality, medium, or low. Some of them will actually have nanite, like these ones I downloaded already right here. You can see we have nanite, but for this example, I think I'm just gonna go with something around 4K. So I'm gonna download these rocks and then I'm gonna add these to my project as well. And while these are downloading, let me take this hero tree stump right here and actually add this to my project. So I actually have this one downloaded already with nanite. I'm gonna click add to add this one here. Now with these rocks completed, I'm gonna left click on this. And then I'm also down here in the lower right hand corner, gonna click add. And now I have everything in my scene that I wanna get started with. So back in Unreal Engine 5.3, if I look down here in the lower left hand side, inside of the content browser, you can see I have my tree stump. You can see I have my rocks and then further down under surface, you can see that I actually have my material, which is right here. So I'm gonna left click on this material and drag it right here where it says material. And this is automatically gonna add it to our landscape. So I can actually close out my content browser, come down here. I like to hit fit the data just to make sure everything that's inside of our height map is to our pleasing. And then I'm gonna hit import here. And I'm just gonna wait for this to import. And now you can see we have our terrain with our material on there and it looks all brown right now. But actually, let me come back up here to landscape mode, hit selection. I'm going to hold the right click on my mouse and hold W just to move in a little bit more. And you can actually see, whoops, I moved in too fast. So I'm going to scroll my mouse to make it a little bit slower. Now I'm going to hold W, push in here a little bit more. And you can actually see that that material is tiled across our terrain. So that kind of gives you a scope of how big this terrain is because we had to pull all the way down here just to see the detail inside of our landscape material here. And so to get started, I'm gonna show you guys how we can use the foliage tool to just lay some rocks in our scene here. So if I come up here to the top left-hand corner where it says selection mode, I'm gonna come down here to foliage, left click on this. And right down here, you can see it says drop foliage here. Now, if I come down here to my content drawer, and actually I'm gonna dock it in this panel because it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna come over here to where it says 3D assets. I'm gonna look for those rocks here, which I have right here. 
And then I'm going to take this right here where it says static mesh and I'm going to drop it right in here. So I'm going to left click, drop it in here. Then I'm going to close my content browser. And right now when I'm over top of my landscape, you can see that we have this giant half dome here in which if I come over here under my paint settings, I can make this a little bit smaller. So let's say 200, maybe even smaller than that, 100, something like that. And if I left click and drag inside of my scene, you can see that we're starting to place some rocks in here. Now these are a little bit more scattered. So if I hit control Z and come right here down to paint density, instead of 0.5, let's bring this up to one. And if we left click, now we see that we have a little bit more. So I'm gonna hit control Z again. And you can see right here under paint density, if I try to type in 10, it's not going higher than one, but we do have some more settings that we could click on. So if I click on my rock down here, and scroll down here a little bit under this painting, you can see we have another density setting. So if I make this one like 500, start clicking, see we have a lot more rocks. Let's just go crazy. Maybe let's do something like 5,000. Now you can see we have a lot more rocks being scattered inside of our scene. So if I zoom out here, you can see how easy and how powerful this is right here. Like I'm just scattering these rocks all over the terrain. And this is how we could pretty much do a lot of landscape painting. So I'm gonna hit control Z again, because the main thing that we wanna see is how we can bring trees into this scene here. And so I'm actually gonna come back up here, come to selection, and I'm gonna open up the Epic Games Launcher. And with the Epic Games Launcher opened up, I'm gonna come over here to Marketplace, and then I'm gonna come down here to where it says free, and I'm actually gonna click on Mega Scans right here. And as you can see, we have a lot of trees right here off the bat. So if I scroll down, you can see that we actually have a lot more. And if you're familiar with mega scans, you know, inside the Quixel bridge, we don't have trees like this, mostly it's tree stumps. So it's actually pretty cool that they went through and actually added these tree packs that we could add to our scene. And so I'm gonna use this one right here, but feel free to use any of them. Just a caveat, they are pretty large, usually a couple of gigs. So you might wanna give it some time to download. So once you click on it, you can actually come down and see that they are only supported for version 5.1 and higher. And once you click on it, like right here, it would usually say free. And then you click on it and it's gonna say add the project. So if I left click on this, and this is gonna open up where we have all of our projects here. So if I scroll down and look for the School of Motion one that I created, this one right here, scroll of motion foliage. I'm going to left click on this and then I'm going to add the project. And you can see right here, it's going to show you the download, but if you already downloaded it, it's going to automatically just add it to your project. So now that we're back in our original scene, I actually want to find a hillside that we could use for this example here, because I want to show you guys the proper way to use the foliage tool. So I'm just going to zoom around my map. Maybe I see something over there in the distance. So maybe use this one right here. This has a nice slope on it. So I'm going to park myself to about right here. And let's go over here to where it says selection mode, come down here to foliage, and then I'm just going to add some trees. So I come back down here to my content folder. I'm going to dock it in the panel and I'm going to look for those trees. So I'm going to click on this right here. And actually, instead of foliage, you want to look for geometry. So I'm going to double click on this. And then I'm going to double click on a simple wind folder. And now we have a bunch of trees in here in which a cool thing is if you scroll over it, if you look really close, you can see the wind is actually moving inside of the little thumbnail there, which I always thought was really neat. And so let's maybe pick two trees to start with. And so maybe these two right here, and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to just left click and drag it right here where it says foliage type. And then I'm going to close out my content browser. And with these two selected, and you want to make sure they have the blue box around them and the check mark, you can see now down here, we can actually control some of these attributes here. So right off the bat, let me scroll back in here. Sorry, I went too close in there, maybe somewhere around here. And I'm just going to start painting this some trees. And you can see if I scroll back here a little bit, these trees are painting in at an angle in which in nature, trees usually go straight up and down like any foliage, even if it's on a hillside, you'll notice that it's only going vertical. It doesn't go sideways like that in most cases. So I'm going to hit control Z. And one way to get around that is if I scroll down here under placement where it says align to normal, we want to actually uncheck this and average normal. We want to check this on. So now if I paint on my hillside, you can see now the trees are vertical, just how they're intended to be inside of nature here. And you can see that the wind is automatically added to the leaves and it just looked really cool right off the bat. But if you notice, if I push down in here a little bit, you can see where the tree stumps are. They're floating above the ground, like they're touching the plane, but they're not fully inside of there. So I'm going to hit control Z and let's actually make it so they're pushed more inside of our landscape here. So over here under placement again, where we have min and max, I'm just going to do negative 50 just to give you guys an example of what's going to happen. So if I start painting on the terrain now, 
Now you can see the tree stumps are actually inside of our landscape. And then if we want to add some variety in here, let's switch this out. So I'm just going to reset this and let's say a minimum of negative 50, but a maximum of negative 20, somewhere around there. So if we start scrolling this in, you can see that some of the tree stumps, we can actually see a little bit more of the dirt there. And then others are actually pushed in. So that's going to give you a little bit of variety inside of your height there. Let me actually control Z once again to delete this. And then I'm going to change my density as well. So maybe we don't want as many trees. Let's change this to 10. And now you can see it's a little bit more sporadic here. Let me control Z again, move up here to the top, paint density, make this one 0.1, something like that. And now you can see as I'm painting on the trees on my scene, they're a lot more spread out. So you can make it as dense or as less dense as you want, which I always thought was a really cool option there. Now, right off the bat, you can see how powerful this tool is already getting there. And especially if you wanted to make a forest, like let me zoom way back inside of my scene here and let me just start painting these on like crazy. Let me actually add some more trees in here. So if I come down here to content drawer, come down here and go to my geometry, simple wind. Let me add maybe some of this bushy one right here. So let me add this one here. And yeah, I think that should be good. So I'm going to select all three of these and you can see that down here inside of our attributes, they reset it. So let me reset this one right here, make this maybe 50. And then for my scale, we can actually change the minimum and the maximum height for our scale as well. So maybe let's do minimum of 0.5, maximum of one down here, align to normal, make sure we turn that off. Average normal, have this check marked on. And then for my placement, this is going to have to get reset it too. So let's do, let's do negative 50 for both of them. So negative 50, something like that. And then we're just going to paint on this forest like crazy. So if I pull back here, you can see that even with all these trees and we have the wind deformer on and everything, we're not really getting that much lag inside of our viewport. So if I come up here, let me actually come down here to show FPS you can see that we're still getting the solid 60 frames per second. And I'm just painting on this really dense forest, which I always thought was neat because for a lot of the shows that I work on, a lot of times I have to build out really big landscapes. And this just made it really quick and easy to make something really fast. And so you can see, even with painting on, there's very less forest in here. I'm still getting a really high frame rate inside of my viewport. Even if I scroll down here and move into the forest, like I'm in the forest right now, with all these highly detailed leaves and we're still getting a really nice frame rate. Now, granted, I'm working on a 4090 on my GPU and I'm using a 64 core Threadripper, but even still on my laptop, I'm still able to do this type of stuff here. So let's just pick a good area just to make a quick scene real quick. So let's say we want to build maybe our scene right here. So I'm actually going to come back over here to selection. Let's pick that Japanese stump that we had pulled down earlier from Mega Skins. So I'm going to come down here, Mega Skins, 3D Asset. Let's do the thickest tree right here. Let's put this in here, something like that. I always like starting with just like a hero asset like that to kind of build around. Now, with all that stuff added down here inside of my content browser, let me come down here to Assets. You can see that I have my, my forest roots right here. I'm just going to left click and drag it in here. Maybe let's put this around a tree like that. So. You can notice right now when I'm moving, it's actually snapping and I don't like snapping a lot of times. So if I come up here where we have like these blue checks right here, if I turn these off, this is going to turn off snapping for the scale, rotation and location inside my viewport. So now when I move around, I can freely move around and I'm just going to move back here a little bit. And this is where we just start building out our scene. So if I hold down the alt key on the keyboard, left click, you can just drag this out to add some more roots in here. And you can already see how powerful this is for just quick, you know, quickly making these scenes inside of Unreal Engine. So let's say I'm happy with how everything is right here. Like, of course, you put some more time into it, messing with scale, messing with rotation. You don't want everything to be uniform, but let's say we want to break this up a little bit with some ferns. So if I come back over here, come down to my foliage tool, scroll down here at the bottom, you can see that once I added it from Mega Scans, it automatically added it inside of my foliage tool here. So I'm going to select these trees right here and turn this off. And then I'm going to select all these ferns and just turn these on. So let me hold down the shift key while I'm selecting these. And I'm going to have these selected. And right off the bat, you can see now we can paint some ferns inside of our scene, in which I want to have a little bit more density in there. So I'm going to hit Control Z, come up here where we have paint density. Maybe let's do like 0.7, somewhere around there. Just move inside of our scene and really just start painting this in. 
So right off the bat, you can see that we're just quickly creating a scene in here inside of Unreal Engine and everything's looking pretty good. Like I'm not doing any lighting or anything yet. You can see with the wind, we actually have the shadow coming from the trees and they're just hitting our foliage just right, right there. If you did want to change your lighting, just really quick, if I left click, actually, let me close my content browser. I'm just going to select something inside of my scene. If I hold control on my keyboard plus the L key, you can see that we have the sundial down here. And now all I have to do is move my mouse. I'm not clicking my mouse or anything. I'm just moving my mouse and that's going to move the sun for us, which I always thought was a really neat thing as well. If you quickly just want to change the mood inside of your lighting, inside of your scene. So I'm not going to get in full detail about lighting. I cover a lot of that stuff in my School of Motion course, especially how to build out scenes like this. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of how we can use the foliage tool just to quickly create something like this. Like you can already see within a few minutes how nice this is looking. Imagine if you put an hour or two into your scene, how cool of a result that you could get. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg of how far you could go with the foliage tool and the Mega Scan trees inside of Unreal Engine 5. But I just wanted to put it on your radar in case you guys want to go in there and explore a little bit more. And as I alluded to earlier, of course, I always have tutorials on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jonathan Wimbush. And if you really want to up your level, I do have an Unreal Engine 5 course here on School of Motion, where I go a lot deeper into building full scenes just like this and even add an animation so you can render it out with the sequencer show it off online or even use it for client work like i showed you there at the top so if you're feeling this make sure you give us a comment down below inside the comments and maybe share some of your creations with us as well and make sure you also go to school of motion and check out the other courses there's a full variety of stuff that you could go to for motion graphics artists whether you're getting into 3d 2d or anything of the like there's always something you can find at school of motion and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care